some of the flow of activities we have below that we can see that is taking place. So fast running with rhythm, horizontal takeoff from short approaches, uh, multiple jumps, uh, acrobatic elements. That means uh, you can do a lot of uh, um, very effective related activities. So these are some of the core mission activities we are putting together. Finally, the last phase of blue color is where you actually actualize them. Where you actually bring them to the actual practice of training uh, and prepare them. So again, how you are layering the activity based on the coordinated demand and how are your training components are following. Okay, so this is the seven skills, um, steps of performance practice, uh, which uh, I find um, could be implemented. Uh, of course, we start with performing a skill. So the skill could be as, as, as simple as hopping on one foot on the spot. Uh, so once you know that a movement pattern takes place effectively, what I do, I will think I need to make sure that there's no <coughs> disruption and all that. So I try to make it as tight as possible. Then I move on to now I'm pushing the technical or the skill to work faster so that he's able to be able to perform. Of course, you take to take some time for the skill for the to accept, practice and to incorporate. Then comes the preparation where now I have to perform under fatigue. Why? Because in competitions we don't have that kind of uh, luxury where I can take, uh, after training, I have three minutes break or I have a five minutes break. So it is under fatigue. So it comes under a very specific preparation for you to know that you have to train them. Next, we have to train them under pressure. So when you are fatigued and you are pressure, because the moment you get to fatigue, you are now tired, your processing is, is slowing down, but you are still required to perform. So again, under pressure. So how am I getting the athlete to be able to perform all these activities is becomes a preparation for competition and of course uh, like we all know there's no better place to practice them as in competition so again consistency in competition uh, mini competitions or uh, training competitions give that assurance for us and finally you bring it to a major level competitions where you probably might be competing week in week out you might be doing uh, a few competitions within the week so again, this is how the skill sets are being prepared. And of course, when we organize them, this entire skill set of preparation, we are going to keep in mind, okay, it has to go from static to dynamic, simple to complex, slow to fast, unloaded to loaded. I think the first three things are quite uh, known to everybody we've uh, gone to uh, our coaching courses and all that. Uh, unloaded and loaded are pretty much what I mean by unloaded. Unloaded means using my own body weight. So my body weight has no additional resistance. can safely get. So you can see how smoothly he creates the action from the moment to the moment he slows down and then he walks casually across. So I believe uh, this kind of movement are also animal instinct. Probably we are also one. I think it's trainable. Uh, it is the matter of practice that we can do uh, on consistent basis. And how often we practice them becomes, a, what you mentioned earlier, unconscious uh, competence. Okay, um, I'll show you some of the videos that I have used or some of the trainings I've used in, in my uh, training with uh, athletes. Uh, they are both, um, I have worked with athletes before, uh, athletes with uh, uh, disability impairments, so visual impairments, sorry, um, intellectual impairments. And normal stream athletes as well. So intellectual impairment athletes, um, in terms of uh, their processing, uh, it is a bit more challenging for them. So again, my when I took up, um, I've been working with him for almost good to four years, and it's always that process of how to make it uh, effective for him so that the coordination he can become available. Okay, um, so these are some of the practical integration of coordination exercises that we can put in. Um, so one of it is um, I've written in focus what is the object, what I want to do in terms of uh, the coordination I'm looking for and when can I do that. So from general and to what I do. So the first movement. Okay, so it's pretty much a single, I think we are all over, uh, familiar with overweight throws. Oh, sorry. 
Wait a moment. Okay, overhead throws. Uh, what happens is that he has to pause with a single leg. So again, this is a highly coordinated action because not only he have to release the ball um, and, and um, to move it powerfully, but as well as he has to pause himself after the game. A lot of coordination has to go in to help him to achieve that uh, pressure. Okay, the next one is uh, is loaded kinesthetic exercise that we do. So I, I, I do again. So it's a very typical hip thrust action that we do. Um, normally, in general phase, I will not do it with jumps. It means I will pretty much keep it uh, as a training focus so that he knows how the movement is done effectively so there's a lot of control in the different muscle groups. Then once we are comfortable, we'll move to what we call as the loaded kinesthetic so that gives dynamic uh, aspect to it. Um, I think next one is uh, pretty much uh, hurdle drills. So here, uh, the focus is uh, is to work on different movement set within. So we are normally used to just stepping over hurdles or uh, moving it fast, but to give uh, a bit more dimension to it so that you bring in um, flexibility exercises incorporated within the drill itself, it gives a little bit more uh, process so that he has to now have to look around to see how to orientate, how to orientate his body. So there is a lot of um, information perceptions that goes into it. Um, next one, I think uh, we are all familiar with piston squats. Okay, but uh, the element that I use here is to close his eyes. So we close the trans, um, the referral for the brain so that it has to perform without any form of response. So again, piston squat is easy to do if your athlete is quite strong enough. It's always up the notch. So again, remember the five uh, aspect of information that comes to the brain, how can we uh, change will be important. Okay, um, this is another one that I do for, um, so standing on a different platform, so the platforms are different. So again, uh, it's a different uh, kinesthetic awareness. Okay. And he's having a kettleball, uh, I think it was about uh, eight kilo kettleball, or six kilo, if I remember. Yeah. So this again is to coordinate a quick action, the quick switch of the foot and exert and get into upright position. So again, it's positioning of uh, where he is uh, and focus on the quick rhythm. So most of the times we use this for in general phase to prepare, but specific one will be more of like an activation for warm up as a warm up activity. Okay, um, next one, uh, I have uh, same action. Okay, it's a deadlift combo to a single leg stop. Okay, so it's basically a deadlift action. And then when you explode, you so again, objective is to teach. So again, the weight that you carry might not be heavy, uh, but the quickness of the movement is always being preferred. And it's, uh, it is to, again, here as mentioned, um, uh, that sometimes we forget that um, it's a posterior chain that is uh, pretty much uh, our driver. So, um, okay, some of the movements are here. So, what I do is usually I use a normal weight barbell, but I dangle with 2.5 kilos uh, elastic with elastic band. And because when they move, this uh, weight at the side is always moving. So, with that, it creates a lot of tension within the body so that the core has to maintain his position his limbs have to maintain the position to that way to help go move okay here is another one there's a, again a single leg action to explosive movement and the next one here we go is um it is carrying dumbbells uh, doing skipping with dumbbells man 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 Okay. To coordinate yeah. our movement and also yeah. how to strengthen yeah. our muscle, how to make our body stable and everything. So many things that we learn from Mr. Vedamani and conceptual. So I think this is very benefit for us and for each one who want to ask. This time, uh, we don't give you uh, oral uh, question, but you can 
put in but yeah in the chat room you just chat your question and also for the friend who uh, join in the streaming youtube you can also ask in the chat room so then the chat room will be read it and deliver to me and i will ask you can ask uh, to mr viramani for example then you ask question then i will deliver to mr viramani later so now the second presenter our great coach from thailand mr ekavit sawangpol he is a world athletic and thailand national coach for a long time and he's also strength and conditioning trainer for various sport i think we can learn for not not but it's also for many sport he already coach for strength and conditioning he's also lecture in the national sport university in thailand think, welcome to mr ekavit and i give you uh, the room for you please mr ekavit thank thank you very much. thank you very much. Uh, thank you first of all thank you for your for your inv invitation me to lecture in this room uh, thank you for vira i have learned a lot from your presentation you always very nice. yeah it's very nice presentation it's very nice and now my my presentation already done because vira already finished <laughs> uh, thank you for all the participants in this room uh, to come to share an idea uh, how to train uh, speed. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, speed is one of the key elements uh, says in sports competition. Let's see uh, what we have to do when we do a speed training to the athlete and what we have to prepare before we do. Yeah. Now, okay. Okay, uh, a little bit uh, time spent to prepare the PowerPoint. This is a speed training, yeah? a speed in sport, and not a speed training in athletic. Uh, because uh, in in the sport, sport, if we, we look at game sport like a football, volleyball, tennis, badminton, uh, the speed of them are totally different from our sprinter. It has a lot of movement direction and they have to have to do quick movement direction changing that's why we have many things more than our sprinter today i will discuss with you about four contents four topics four topics first one what is speed the second one how many type of speed the third one will be why speed is important in speed competition. Last but not least is how to do speed training. Uh, this is a summary. Because speed training is so complex normally. It's complex. We have because you have to do so many things uh, so many things in your training. I have learned uh, how how many years I have learned how to do speed training. But today I have to summary sum up for you only thirty so I I will go fast eh? What is speed? Normally, is, normally speed is the capaci capacity to travel or move quickly or move very, very quick. Uh, in mechanically, speed is expressed through ratio between space and time. How many space you can cover in time? If you can reduce time, it means the speed is getting faster. Maybe you can measure speed in meter per second. Our sprinter, if you want to uh, test them a maximum speed, we test how many meter per second they can perform. Uh, in 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 long distance runners, the pace of running training and the pace of the competition we measure by kilometer per minute. Or in the car racing. We measure by kilometer per hour. Uh, that is that means speed uh, is very important in so many sports. In the car, with the car, in the bicycle, 
uh, it's not only sprinting. Now, this speed can divide into many types because in the game sport, the speed is so variety. That's why we have to do so many training different than our sprinting. First one, the whole body speed. The whole body speed is our sprinter. We know this very well because we are athlete, athletic coach. And many sports also have have a lot of whole body speed in the competition. Yeah, boxing also have whole body speed. They have to move the whole the the, the whole body uh, very fast. Uh, sprinter do this. Football player do this. Goalkeeper jump into the air. The whole body speed. How how fast they can jump from the ground. Yeah. Limb speed. The limb speed is how fast of the arm and how fast of the leg and leg and arm together very fast you can sprint fast too uh, we are already show, show you how to do the coordination between leg and arm in his uh, long jumper uh, exercise that that does like a, something like a sprint do but that is uh, need uh, very high highly demand of the coordinated reaction time normally we think the reaction time is used only for a sprinter. But in many sports, they always need reaction time. In sprinter, in sprinting competition, you have only one chance to do reaction in the starting. But in many sports, they always react and respond, always react and respond. Uh, if you are a boxer and you have slow reaction, it's very dangerous for you. If you are the goalkeeper and you have slow reaction, it's also very dangerous for the for to lose the game. So many sports also need reaction. Acceleration is how fast you can increase your speed. It's very important for the game sport because you can get into the better position to play the ball, to play the tennis, to hit the badminton. Now quickness. When we talk about quickness, quickness needs so many things. See, quickness needs perception ability. Quickness needs uh, reaction ability. Quickness needs uh, decision making ability. Quickness needs speed. Quickness needs power. Quickness needs uh, orientation. So the quickness, you need so many things. That's why in the sport, that's why in the sport, in the game sport, we always train quickness to the, the player. The maximum speed. In, may, in many sports, they never get into the maximum speed. But they can get into the maximum acceleration. See, in the football, if you want to get the ball in front of you with your component, you might have better acceleration. Speed endurance. The speed endurance uh, is how long you can maintain your speed. It's very important for a sprinter at the end, at the other <laughs> time to the finish line. Uh, and also, and also it's important for the uh, 400 runners to pace during the competition, to pace. How many meters per second you can run during the competitions? Optimal speed. The optimal speed need in many sports. <laughs> if you go to the ball, if you, the ball pass in front of you, you, go to the ball, you need the optimal speed and the rhythmic to get into a good position to play the ball. Speed changing direction. This is uh, maybe we call uh, agility. Agility is mean the, uh, the speed. And agility, normally agility means speed. But in that speed, you can change the direction of the movement very fast. So the agility needs very high speed. Agility also needs uh, acceleration and speed together. Now come to the content why speed is important for your players for me this is very simple better speed make the athlete get into 
better position to play the ball to run to the good position to hit the ball even in the marathon runners when you have a better speed at the finish line you get into a better position you can be a winner in long distance runner you must have endurance to run together with other people but you need speed to be the winner also speed is a determinant ability in many sport speed development is very important in sport training yeah. that's why today we are all together and we share an idea how to do speed training uh, i love that i i, I talked to paria paria asked me uh, who you lecture first i said we that much lecture first because because the speed is highly contribution by coordination lack of co good coordination is very difficult to have a better speed how to do speed training for me speed training cannot train itself if you want to improve the speed of your athlete you have to do so many things it means so many training so many training so, so many do and so, so many training and so many uh, physical fitness are contributes in your spin or speed training to improve acceleration speed and agility you must train many components now in my in my powerpoint we have four components to be trained and every component needs a lot of information and need a lot of data to be trained too the first one uh, mr virat mani already mentioned to you uh, 45 minutes uh, 45 minutes uh, 10 minutes ago he mentioned very good and very good information for for uh, all the coaches to do a coordination training and he also keeps some example power training and coordination training to get us that is very important that's why his athletes who uh, the jumpers uh, very good success in in uh, competition first one we have to train a coordination and perception ability one of tennis player uh, father of him bring him to me training right now we we, we learned that to improve acceleration, speed, agility, and reaction, you need perception ability, coordination. You need uh, one of this player, balance, uh, uh, power power of him, bring him to me. So be training. there before you start right. your athlete to train uh, speed, or you ask your athlete to be to train sprinting. You must be prepared. This is the whole body speed, sorry. This is the whole body speed. The whole body speed is the ability to move your body as fast as you can. It means you have to train two training methods. The whole body speed, you can train direct training method. It means you can do sprinting. 30 meters sprinting. 40 meters, three minute rest between, and do do per set, maybe maybe uh, three to four repetition per set, and then three minute rest between and sprint again, and maybe have to do two or three set. Uh, this is a sprint training. This is direct method, and then when uh, we are mentioned to you already, no need for me to do to mention you again you have to do a lot of coordination training you can do sprint drill you can do different training i love uh, virat mani uh, uh, drill one hand dumbbell and do the drill yeah sensory sensory motor work a lot when you use only one hand you have to control the body you have to do uh, uh, core muscle control and then the, the neuromuscular control is increased 
You know why? If you always train the same thing, the speed of your athletes will not improve. You have to challenge the neuron muscular of your athlete with different movement, different direction, different weight, and only one hand weight is one of the method you can use. A second one, to train the whole body speed, uh, you can do a strength training. You can do a strength training. Uh, for me, no, no strength training. For me, better we say uh, power training, plyometric training, to increase the ability of the muscle contraction. When you have a power training, it means the muscle, the muscle it can contract very fast. Then the, your muscle can contract very fast. It means uh, the limb, the limb of you can can move faster it means your leg can move faster your arm can move faster and then you get better speed in your sprinting throwing kicking punching this is the example of the direct method training yeah? to do the acceleration or the maximum accelerate in this we have to discuss about the the energy system I will not mention you the energy system because today we talk about the speed training. But I just to inform you that uh, if you want to do the acceleration, the training must be in anaerobic, electric energy system. If how many repetition to do, you do or you at least do, it means the energy system still in the anaerobic, electric energy system. You do repetition, but Every repetition, the athlete the, need the energy supply only from the anaerobic, anaerobic electric energy system during training. But during recovery, you need aerobic. Okay, you have to do four, five seconds, uh, four to six seconds for the maximum uh, speed or maximum performance uh, at hundred percent. If you do the uh, acceleration training. Or uh, if you do a speed endurance training, speed endurance training, you have to be in anaerobic lactic energy system. This means you have to do longer than six seconds, or you have to do longer than uh, nobody can run hundred percent at uh, three hundred meters. So you run ninety uh, percent at hundred meters. Yeah? Okay, the optimal speed. This is also, if you train optimal speed, you, you do in anaerobic electric energy system. But if you train rhythmic, if you train rhythmic, yeah, you also need the optimal speed. You can select your speed. Maybe this rhythm is slow. This rhythm is medium, medium speed. And this rhythm is maximum speed. So it's still in uh, anaerobic electric energy system agility also agility also anaerobic electric energy system so the systematic of the the training is uh, not longer than five to six seconds of the movement but the the intensity of the training is hundred percent if you do optimal speed agility acceleration acceleration of the movement that why uh, if you do longer than that, maybe your training is get into the wrong way. Just to remind you that, just to, to remind you that uh, in the training, especially agility, optimal speed, acceleration, max, maximum speed, less can be more. This is keyword. You know why? Most of the coaches like to train more. One more, and one more, and one more. Yeah, but that's my idea in speed, in speed training or sprint training. Less can be more. More is mean you change the anaerobic lactic energy system to be anaerobic lactic energy system. Then you not train maximum speed. You not train acceleration. You go to uh, speed endurance training, and your athlete not getting faster, but they can do that speed getting longer. They are not fast. 
okay? Less and be more. Also, in a speed endurance training, if you do more repetition, what happened to your athletes? They can think run slower. Then they run slower. It's not a speed endurance and become endurance training. You change from speed endurance training to to uh, extensive interval. So in the speed training, less can be more. Whole body in direct in direct method. You do weight training, power training, utilization, resistant run. Uh, you can pull the sled. Your athlete, athlete, you to pull the sled in the track. You can do plyometric training, or you can do to increase the power of the athlete. The plyometric training is it one of power. Is is the reactive power. And also you can do uphill running, flexibility, mobility. You can increase the rates of motion. You can do PNF. Uh, we can do PNF per proprio receptive neuromuscular facilitators. It's so complex, <laughs> very difficult to talk, <laughs> but and also difficult to do. Uh, abilities, and then you have to do mobility, ability, ability of the joint to move. Joy can move properly. The joy can move very good. Uh, because if you do a lot of strength training and you not know mobility, the, the joy is getting more thick and then very difficult to move. And then you do a lot of strength training without mobility. What happened to your athlete? The athlete gets stiff and then very difficult to move. So flexibility and strength training and mobility. You have to do that. Limb speed. Limb speed. The speed of the limb, the speed of the arm, and the speed of the leg. See, the method is part of the technical, yeah? whole body technical movement. And then, this is the whole body technical movement. Uh, you can train only arm, or you can train the whole body of the technical movement. Uh, you can modify with the equipment, like uh, you use the medicine ball training, light, lighter implements, you do the chop put training, you use the lighter weight, you can do the heavy implements to increase more power, or you can combine the heavy implements and the movement together. This is how to train the limb speed. Reaction time. I love this. You can see the pictures. This is how to measure the reaction. The reaction comes normally we think about how fast we can catch, how fast we can kick, how fast we can rest, we can respond. But normally you have to train the brain first. So if you have to get more uh, reaction time, you have to do more fast training or awareness training. To increase the perception ability first, and then you have to to train them how to make a decision making. That is the performance of the brain, is not the performance of the body, because the all the thing, all the movement is start from the brain. The pattern of the movement is setting in the brain, and you can train the sensory motor. Then you you use the audio listening, uh, vision, seeing and tactile touching and then you can start train reactants you can play with the times on your mark set go on your mark set go so time is short and time is long and uh, at least cannot uh, cannot guess how short or how long we will we will give the signal to respond to, to increase the, to, to, how say, Vera, how say, to increase the, to increase the perception, to increase the perception of, of the athlete. They cannot get okay. the signal. the signal. Okay, this is my English expert. <laughs> okay, you can change the position. 
You can changing the position. You can changing the intensity of the stimulus, high or low stimulus, stimulation, position, sitting, standing, uh, lay down in back, front, lay down in tummy. Uh, so many exercise you can change, or you can combine all together. See this? As you see on the right pictures on your screen. Uh, this is the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper need really uh, high react to the situation of the ball because if the ball go to the goalkeeper is very short time. That that why he need a very fast reactive. See speed for uh, where where it's more. Speed is according to the dynamic and mechanic movement pattern. Yeah. This is very, very uh, important. Or we can say this is the kinetic chaining. Yeah. Movement pattern. Um, in the movement patterns, it need kinetic chaining. In the kinetic chaining, it means we mustn't start first. Normally, we have, we have learned that the big muscle group start first, and the small muscle group later. Have you have seen in these pictures, picture number one, this is a store energy, store energy. You load the, you load force, sorry. You are loading force into the ground. Yeah? And now from the right foot, from the right foot, transfer to the hip, and from the hip, transfer to the trunk, and from the trunk, transfer to the chest and the shoulder, and then transfer to the racket, and then hit the ball. This is all the movement at the pattern. And then, this means we need to train the movement pattern. This is not a uh, technique. Normally, this is coordinated, like uh, Mr. Vira mentioned to you before. Speed for sport. If you want to train speed for the sport, you have to think a lot. Not only 100 meters. Yes. Sorry. You have to think about the duration of the competition. How long you need to sprint? How many times you need to sprint? How many meters you need to sprint? Type of the energy supply. What kind of the energy supply in this game? Direction of the movement, one direction or multi-direction. Type of skill, close or open. We already mentioned this too. Uh, skill, close or open skill. This type of the, the skill. A technical, highly technical demand like a our sport. A short put, discuss, hammer throws. Or no need, a highly technical demand. But variety of the movement and, and you can change can change the direction and the rhythm very fast. Technical and tactical of the competition, performance of the opponent. Sometimes, when you do a training plan, you have to think about the performance of your component, of your athlete component. How long the competition, how many seconds, minutes or hours, how many rounds, how many sets, how many points. Yeah. Energy system, speed. Normally, speed training is always in uh, anaerobic electric energy system. But when you go to speed endurance, you pass from an anaerobic electric energy system to the anaerobic lactic energy system. Both are working together. And also, if you do speed endurance training, also you have aerobic contribution in your sprinting. You need to be in and recovery, out, to do in, out, yeah? game, rhythmic, and tempo. Uh, we know this very well because he is middle-long distance runner. He do a lot of tempo training. Yeah? But uh, rhythms, before he not do rhythm because he is, he is long distance runner. But... I think you mute yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. 
uh, you have to be variety. You have maintained to speak in a fatigue uh, situation. Also, uh, in, in coordination also, you can maintain movement under fatigue. Obstacle, disturbance, game duration, as is already mentioned. Technical movement, variety of the movement. So many things you have to to be concerned before you start to do speed training for your sport because you have to know your sport very well. So you need to to uh, analyze the performance of your athlete, analyze the performance of the game, and you have to know the movement pattern. This is the energy supply in the speed training or the power games. Eh? In the energy supply, what do you need? You need the ATPCP, and then you need the anaerobic, anaerobic glycolytic. If the, the game is getting longer, or the, 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 the distance of the sprinting is getting longer. And then at the end, you also need aerobic energy supply. But in, in, this, in this training, if you do a lot of sprinting, the ability of the aerobic will be going down. If you do a lot of a slow running, the, the sprinting is going down. Yeah. It means uh, if you do training, you have to prepare your athlete with very good aerobic, and then your athlete can get more workload. Your athlete can get more workload in, in training. When your athlete get more workloads, it's good for coach to give more training. Okay, now come to, I'm oh, sorry, now we come to uh, Sorry, yeah. This is my first time use uh, <laughs> use use uh, Zoom for lecturing. It's not it's not it's not expert to use this. <laughs> I am the expert in planning, not the expert in in, in technology. Uh, but I, I I think I have to try. Yeah, I have to try. You see this? Uh, this is uh, visuals, awareness, and agility. Decision making. This is I use this for to train my uh, tennis players. It, it's fun. This need a lot of things. Needs kinesthetic feedback. They need a vision, vision feedback. They need to control the movement, and they need to make a decision making. This is this is some idea how to train. Uh, speed and agility with the vision and awareness vision awareness okay and also you train the changing direction agility of the athlete this uh, how to do changing direction training These two athletes are the professional tennis player. The red one right now he is in USA, study in USA, get a scholarship, study uni university in U USA in Mississippi. In Mississippi, this is also changing direction. This is power and changing direction together in the same time. <laughs> Uh, you don't understand what I say. This how to train balance. This is son of our poor water, and now he is a coach. And I use this kit to give you some example. How how easy? It's easy to train balance. Uh, uh, you almost uh, don't need equipment. Yeah. Normally, you know, almost don't need equipment. This is some crazy idea to train the balance of the young athlete.
This is seven year old boy. And this is one of my players. I train her right now. She is in England in the university. This is balance and stability training. This girl is uh, ITF when ranking number 29, uh, number 28. Uh, she is and she is a Thailand national team player, also right now in USA. Normally you do, I train the limb speed, but no, normally it's not. This is a very high coordinate training. And the limb speed is all of the movement. Normally it's the whole body speed together in the same time. And very fast contraction of the whole body. This one, uh, this, this, we also train a coordination. Coordination, perception ability, kick feedback. This is coordination training. It has some funny idea to train coordination and movement and agility in the same time. You need the vision perception, hand eye coordination. Uh, Sensory motor to be balanced and kinesthetic feedback to be uh, forward and backward. This is agility and acceleration. Agility accelerate. Also, you need agility and you can accelerate your agility very fast. This is not in athletic, but this need in many sports. Mr. Eka, you have two, two minute time. You see, everything is getting longer. This is acceleration. Bowman, 60 meter competition. Very easy, <laughs> very easy, yeah, very easy. Very good starting and acceleration. Reaction training. I love this. I need you to see this.
you can see this and uh, you think this is need a very high coordination in reaction because you need to share your focus you need to share your awareness you need to share your body movement it's very difficult you you can try at home i tried this but some exercise i cannot do <laughs> some exercise i cannot do uh it's very difficult this girl is very good yeah. you have to train your athlete like it too Last slide. Quickness. In the quickness, you need changing direction, you need orientation, you need kinesthetic feedback. You need uh, focus, you need awareness, you need perception ability, you need power, you need speed, you need agility. So in quickness training, you need all the things to move fast, make a decision fast, and also perception fast, respond fast, changing direction fast. So, black. Thank you very much for your mm -hmm. listening, and thank you very much for all the participants in the room. Uh, and then, uh, if you have any question, uh, send it to Miss Seria. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Tang Nakin is here. Mr. <laughs> Tang, hello. A long time no we'll see you. Eh? Uh, okay. okay. Thank Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ekavit Sarampol, this very was was very uh, interesting presentation. And after we have to give a concept and everything about the neuromuscular system, now Mr. Ekavit give a kind of training in speed and type of speed. And I think it's very creative uh, exercise for speed and we can follow the training. But uh, for the participant, be patient. I already write down your question. Hey, later I will do, but we still have another uh, speaker. For our friend in YouTube, uh, be patient also, your question also already I noted. And so far we have uh, subscribed 70, uh, 750 participants in YouTube and like 650 and many chat. So I think this is a very interesting seminar. So I think this will be benefit for us. So now we invite Mr. Soryo Agui Bawa. This can be our Indonesian he still handle the sea game recording. So he's also yes. Indian DJ in 2008, and now he's uh, he's working in the sport ministry. But he's also his level one, uh, level two, Acha coach. So I think he has a lot of things to talk to you, and this should be one of the best practice in speed training. Mr. Soriago. Oke, okay. baik terima kasih Pak Ria. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. Many master here, Mr. Ekawit, Mr. Beranani, Mr. Panekin, uh, my friend Hamka. Oh. <laughs> I saw your many uh, experience in me, but uh, okay, uh, Mr. Ria, uh, invite me, uh, thank you, invite me to join with this uh, seminar. Uh, Mr. Feramani and uh, Mr. Ekavit already give uh, many, many things. So like, uh, I just maybe a little bit completely with my experience because uh, I have only two, two slides <laughs> at the moment. Mm.
Yeah. So today this in seminar uh, like a sharing experience, my experience when I be an athlete until now uh, with the I have the running school in Jakarta. Uh, okay, this is a uh, non-technical. Like uh, the first thing is, okay, we have a religion. Uh, I am a Muslim, for example. I am a Muslim. I have a uh, five times uh, salat, and then uh, also uh, another pray like uh, uh, in bahasa salat malam, salat tahajud, like that, and the. Uh, Also, not only pray between me in, uh, in with Allah, but also we need to like uh, commit or kalau bisa dibilang sih uh, lebih ridho. Kalau in, in bahasa ridho, ridhonya Allah itu ridhonya di orang tua. Ridhonya orang tua itu ridhonya Tuhan atau ridhonya Allah. Nah, disinilah like uh, for small thing is like. Only working or training, just say nieces or say, oh, "Mom, mommy, daddy, I will go to training. Uh, pray, pray for me to my success or something." This seems a little thing, but a big effect. Like a rest to do more, like like Mr. Ikarit said. And then uh, when still until right now, still I retired. I'm working and free. I'm also uh, always. I'm always. Uh, send message to my mom, call to my mom and my father about the the what I I I, I doing. Apa yang saya lakukan selalu saya minta mohon doa sama orang tua saya itu pasti itu wajib. Karena ketika ketika kita latihan udah lebih mantap. Oh saya berdoa, orang tua berdoa, keluarga berdoa itu lebih mantap lagi. So uh, many support, family support. Uh, Myself support so like a big support to more confident to training and also in the competition. The second one is sacrifice. This is a uh, sacrifice. For example, my hometown. Uh, I was born in Solo. Solo is in Rajava. I must move to Jakarta to training training center. This is uh, around 600 kilometers now by by plane. Ah. Uh, My father, my family in Solo. I'm I'm alone in Jakarta, and then uh, I have many friends in Solo also. So like, uh, jadi saya meninggalkan keluarga, saya meninggalkan orang tua, saya meninggalkan sekolah. Jadi saya mesti pindah ke sekolahan baru. This is a sacrifice. Jadi ada pengorbanan di mana jangan sia-siakan pengorbanan itu. Jadi teman-teman di sini uh, mungkin pelatih bisa memberikan edukasi ke atletnya kalau di sini masih ada ada apa ada atlet juga join di sini jadi ketika orang tua itu ditinggalkan terutama saya saya adalah anak anak bungsu ya saya anak anak ragil kalau orang Jawa itu namanya ragil itu biasanya tinggal di rumah jagain orang tua tapi ini kebalik saya anak ragil yang harus keluar istilahnya keluar per di ngerantau dan kakak-kakak saya yang ada di Solo jadi pengorbanan ibu ya biasa anak ragil kan sama ibu pengorbanan ibu itu terbayarkan dengan apa ya dengan saya juara gitu kan seperti itu jadi sacrifice di sini make a, your family proud because a long distance with you cannot everyday meeting with you hug you in chat with you so when you could The best result you could, you can got medal, broke the new record or something. So your family, your father, your mother is very very proud. So their sacrifice is like, uh, jadi terbayar lunas seperti itu. Okay, uh, and then the target. Target is when I come to training center with the always with the coach. I asking, okay, coach. My condition, my personal, my my profile is like this. Okay, my personal best, for example, ten forty nine, eh ten for ten forty atau ten forty one. I want to run ten ten three, ten thirty or something. So the target uh, with the coach, coach make the program like a Mr. Ekawet and Mr. Firamani said like that. So with them to one target, so. 
one goal together. Jadi kalau di bahasa Indonesia sama-sama satu target, contohnya dorong dorong mobil dari sama sama-sama tujuannya, dorong mobil sama-sama ke depan enak cepat jalannya seperti itu. Dibanding dorong mobil ada dari samping, ada yang dari belakang itu malah nggak nggak nyampe nyampe. Jadi tetap satu visi satu misi di situ. Oke, okay. the next time uh, the next is uh, discipline. Ini is, uh, ini masih umum ya, is general lah. Istirahat, rest, food, environment, uh, lingkungan. So like uh, for uh, 9, 9 p.m. 10 p.m. must be must be rest, like yeah. And then early morning training because when you when when you uh, when your uh, rest quality is not good, when your environment not good, is problem in your your training. For example, tomorrow morning. Training 300, speed injury 300 meters, uh, and then sleeping start 12 or 1 1 a.m. is you can you can run 300 but not quality, but sometimes make your injured. This this you must uh, the focus over that, and then always positive thinking. This big uh, I mean big experience maybe uh, Mr. Ekarit no. Firamani, Mr. Firamani, uh, 2009, 2009, I got, I break the, the record again. I bring the season record again, and then I break the new record for national team, a national, national, national record for 100. 2009, we know, uh, we have a world championship right, in Berlin. World Championship in Berlin 2009. Uh, Indonesian Federation not send me, send another, send another athlete. I said okay. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I'm disappointed because uh, I am the best athlete in 2009. But it's okay. I just thinking for positive thinking. Okay. It's okay. I'm not going to watch it, but I show. Uh, I will show you. I will best perform in 2000 in Sea Games in the last uh, last year, yeah, 2000 uh, in December. I remember December 13, December 13, 2009. Yeah, alhamdulillah, I got the result. I got the best result. Uh, 10 11 second, uh, 10 17. Sorry, 10 17 seconds. So like a. Uh, Everything when you got the pressure, when you got the bad things on you, to be a positive. Okay. Now we little bit in technical in my experience. So like, uh, okay, dynamic warm up specific with training program. For example, you uh, training program today is a uh, play, play metric. So when you training uh, dynamic warm up. Many little jam high high apa uh, uh, low harder like that. So what everything you do in the warming up is you must say uh, you must look the program training program. For example, the training program speed. Yeah, in warming up, warming up, how to get how to prepare in speed. So like a specific of there this, and then the second. Is for forming running. For example, 100 meters, we have a uh, ada faster fasenya ya. Ada start block, ada akselerasi, ada max speed, ada maintenance speed, ada deselerasi, and then finish. Okay, forming running. Start block. Uh, the little uh, the important thing is like a. Uh, uh, How my hand, how my block, and then every every single athlete have a um, size, a different size, the block, rear block and the front block. So like uh, this, this very important for you. When you move on your mark set, go and go, you push, you you uh, make the explosive power. How to how to good position? How your body? How your hand, how your 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 eyes like that, and then acceleration between zero until 30 or 40 meters. Then maximum speed, uh, maximum speed until seven seventy 
or 80 meters and then maintenance deceleration. Nah, for example, uh, forming running training for acceleration. When I am training, the three point start with the harness. Three point start with the harness and then running. The deceleration is point for acceleration speed. So, three thirty meters and zero and the thirty is forming for focus forming for acceleration because many athlete when to uh, when 20 meters they are moving up and then like uh, uh, doing the maximum speed so the the point point of uh, the target and point of the every single session training must be focus of that so when your athlete doing wrong okay three uh, 30 meters acceleration but wrong technique you must say it over that Sometimes when uh, two two athletes uh, running together, sometimes they are like a make a jogging each other. So must be focused. They because training feel like a combating. When you training like a combating, you feel when combating feel like training. So easy for you, easy for your athlete. Starting for yeah, starting for uh, rest, uh, istirahat last night dari semalam istirahat. Kemudian preparing for a wake up, ya kan? Wake up, pray, a shower, or take a breakfast or something, or cereal something, and then one uh, uh, datang ke lapangan, jalan ke lapangan, kemudian pemanasan, warming up, kemudian melakukan latihan during training. So training feel like competition or feel like competing. When you competing is very easy for you. It's like a psychology, psychology here, and then. The last slide, the, the last thing is important. The two every single part. This is similar when I talk, I said about the acceleration single single part, and then my experience also. This is my I, I give I give I give to you all of your the webinar participant the key of when I got the the record got the gold medal. One day before one day before competition. I'm stand up in the zero meter in the start line. In the start line, I feel the environment. <coughs> I feel the weather. I feel something that I am thinking this stadium, this lane is mine. Right? And then this in this map in zero in uh, start line, my I I, I imagine my uh, my start block is like this. My hand. My, my shoulder, my head, my my eyes, like and then when when the starter gun move, uh, when go and then I feeling so like all oh, this I uh with the walking slowly walking in the one hand one meter one one and half two meter I'm feeling oh dari sini saya sedang melakukan keluar dari star block bagaimana saya memposisikan serabok saya, bagaimana sudut saya, tangan saya, kaki saya, kemudian saya berjalan lagi pelan lagi. Di sini saya masuk akselerasi, saya berjalan akselerasi rasanya seperti ini, akselerasi saya lakukan seperti ini terus terus jalan sampai jalan sampai 30 atau 40 meter. Ketika di situ, nah di sinilah saya masuk ke fase apa fase maksimum speed tadi, kecepatan maksimal tangan saya mesti begini, tenaga saya begini. Seperti itu, kemudian sampai akhirnya 80 meter, deselerasi. Kunci juga di sini, bagaimana saya mempertahankan teknik lari saya, karena uh, kecepatan pasti menurun di situ. Di sini juga speed injurin berperan juga di sini, speed, uh, sorry, strength injurin juga berperan di sini. Bagaimana finish saya, itu saya lakukan di 100 meter sambil jalan. Sambil jalan, saya visualisasi 100 meter itu saya seperti ini. Bahkan 200 meter juga, Alhamdulillah, waktu 2007 saya pecah rekor nasional. Rekor nasionalnya juga sampai sekarang masih ada. Itu juga saya lakukan dari tikungan. Saya jalan pelan-pelan, saya rasain, saya mesti begini-begini. Jadi saya lakukan sampai finish. Jadi, ini uh, Tarya izin uh, tambah ketambahan 5 menit nih, mohon maaf. Jadi ini uh, teman-teman semuanya, saya le seperti lebih ke sharing experience ya, tadi sudah master-masternya tadi master kecepatan tadi pelatih-pelatih hebat tadi pelatih dari Thailand dari Singapura tadi sudah menyampaikan materi-materi uh, yang sangat luar biasa saya pun kembali kembali apa dapat 
apa ya oh iya ini oh iya dulu salah aku segala macam ini tambahan ilmu yang sangat luar biasa terima kasih Faria terima kasih teman-teman semua thank you Misteria thank you everybody uh, who participate in this seminar uh, kalau ada salah kata mohon maaf monggo kalau ada yang bertanya silahkan terima kasih Faria monggo pak thank you very much uh, Mas Suri Agung I think it's very uh, useful also for all the coaches They feel that they have athlete, and the athlete must be look like you, the champion. That is very important. What you do is also very nice and very applicable for us. And now it's time to answer the question. We have here many people join. One of the professor from the Central Java uh, is also here, and from the National Training Center is here. Pak Margono, selamat datang, and also Mbak Ali. Uh, the national, former national uh, athlete, very good athlete, Mbak um, Juana Wangsa Putri is also here. Uh, he's in in the in the YouTube, I think. So I think it's very many many questions. And we have the fathers, the fathers uh, participant join here is Mr. Rakesh Bajra Charya from Nepal. I think he's uh, joined from the Mount Everest Mount. <laughs> so I think it's very important to answer his question if we have. So I hope. Uh, Uh, Ekawit, Mr. Ekawit, Mr. Vera, and Mr. Soryagun can check your chat room. But uh, I will uh, uh, read some question to you. Then maybe later Vera can answer first. Then Ekawit, then after this uh, Mr. Soryo. So for Vera, the somebody asked uh, Christoph Billy asking about the using pet ball to uh, to make the coordination and stability well. It is uh, okay or correct. And the second one is from Nizam. About training program for youth, junior, and senior athletes can be developed. How to develop? And then another question in speed and strength training. How to handle the speed and strength training? Or strength and speed training? It depend on the situation. But Mr. Ekawit, I think already explained about when you do indirect training, you have to train also the uh, strength training. Also, we mentioned also about the one like uh, power clean and something like that. That's very important. But uh, later we will give the uh, speaker to answer. And BMI, body mass index, how the body mass index related to the speed training. Then after this, maybe there is not sorry, yeah. The program after Ramadan, because in Ramadan they train 50% intensity, maybe volume. So after that, how you do after Ramadan? So that's very important to know there. So that why Mr. Soryo can give uh, you your experience later. And from Mr. Wadi from Rio, uh, he asked about the combination between the fast twist muscle fiber and slow twist and how to handle in the speed training so that uh, it can be optimized. Then increase speed for 14 to 18 years, Mr. Ekawit. So maybe how you can increase Uh, training speed for a 14 to 18 years old athlete. How can be uh, training until 100% intensity? So I think the question all is in the chat room. So I will give Mr. Wira Mani first to answer that question. So please, Wira. Okay, um, first question uh, was on um, the use of stability pad. Um, yes, of course, definitely uh, I have... Uh, I use quite a bit of uh, stability pad in my preparation, session, uh, like what I already mentioned, uh, training. Because again, remember we talk about how the information is coming to the brain. One of the criteria is to influence balance requirement. So once I can know that the IT is able to perform the activity on, on the flat surface, now what I do is I move to an uh, instable flat surface. So the stability pad is, is, is a beautiful thing. Then what I do is, Again, it's always to challenge the IT constantly because once the master, you know that that set of coordination is good. Now what I do is you start moving limbs. So again, it can come from the sense of you can jump onto that stability pad and hold a, a particular position. Or you can give him uh, like what I call it, tennis ball throw while he's on the stability pad. So again, a lot of uh, variation you can do. Um, again, it is not uh, limited. So of course, Uh, look for stable ground to establish the system and then you move into unstable ground for challenge that motor pattern. So, uh, next question, yeah. Uh, 
So yeah. yeah, good. So yeah. <laughs> the next question is about the training for youths, junior and adult, and also for the some years. This is how to develop the training progression. Okay, I think um, if you are if you are going through our coaches education, you know that um, at a certain phase of our development, uh, some of the acti- uh, abilities are highly trainable, especially when you are young. The younger you are, the more I use coordination, the better it gets. So again, um, right now, I think some of us, uh, like I can show the small boy, uh, six year old. I have my daughter at home who are six year. So what I do is we try to train them from young, and for them to see and act fast, it is so much better. Um, in training science, again, we talk about brain science. Once the um, the uh, motor pathway, the myelination of the neural pathway is established, it's going to be difficult to change. But if it's in the process of Doing something new, of course, you can influence it better. So the younger you are, more coordination work is required because you want to get that um, motor conditioning or uh, motor coordination to be a solid stage. So that when they move to junior or senior level, I have less work to do. But sometimes that's not always what happens to us uh, as coaches. You get athletes coming from different level. It could be a junior, youth, and senior could come with the same. Motor coordination level. So we need to retrain some of the older guys to meet up the demand. So again, uh, just because they're older doesn't mean I cannot train. Okay, um, just because they're younger means uh, I focus more. So again, there's a variation of balance to see and always look for the movement pattern. It's a matter. It's a pattern smooth. If the athlete is able to execute it at slow speed. Then we increase the tempo to make it faster and faster. Complex. So remember the, the the conditioning of slow to fast, static to dynamic, um, simple to complex, loaded to unloaded. So this is always taking place from junior all the way up to senior. For young athletes, I'll do a um, without the weights only pretty much a lot more on their own body uh, awareness. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this uh, there was another long question from uh, Risky Moyawan. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you can read them. You can answer. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Risky has posted a question. Uh, thanks, Risky, for the question. So you ask. Um, you know, let me let me look at this question. Okay. You mentioned that uh, we use the five steps. Remember, we talk about the very first slide where the division. I mean, the drive takes place. Division. Uh, so orientation, division, execution, results. Um, his question was many times that uh, he has athletes who's confused on what to do, what move up to move, whether to move left to right, um, and a lot of consideration to give. And at the same time, when they execute, um, they have to execute it faster than the opponent. Uh, so he's asking what can be the cause and what can be the treatment. So um, I'll give you an example of uh, the uh, volleyball game as well. So I think as a ball. There's always remember the perception coming in. Um, for us, most of the time is the eye is perception. So the tracking of the ball is important. So when the eye is tracks the uh, object, he knows where he's moving, and I can orientate myself. So that is the primary uh, aspect of decision making. So once I know, I will also know if the next one will be the speed of the ball. So when the speed of the ball comes, if I'm not trained to react quickly, I will miss. So again, the first objective are uh, to know whether to move left or right. I would say it's always about tracking. Um, so again, the speed of the ball is the one I will influence next, which means if the ball is coming too fast for the athlete to to understand, I slow down the speed of the ball. So I take a bigger ball, I let him throw. So the object now is bigger, easier for me to track. I hit. Then I reduce the ball size so that he gets the actual implement size. Then I speed up the ball size as well. So again, you vary the way the perception is coming towards it. It's very similar to um, long jump as well. If you are doing a lot of short approach jumps, the ball comes to you um, uh, at a certain speed. The moment I move back, now the ball comes in a much faster speed. And if I don't practice that stage by stage to increase, I'm going to always have this problem of not moving the ball on time. So it's always a perception thing, eye tracking, and then you increase the size to the athlete to be trained. Then you bring it down to the actual implement that's going to be used. 
increase the speed uh, the speed of the ball. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Mani. And uh, you already have many questions. So now I go to Ekavit. Maybe he can prepare already uh, to read the question in the chat room. But maybe the first, maybe I want you to uh, to answer about the from our coach uh, Martial Art. So how to increase speed in Martial Art situation? Eka. Uh, okay. Uh, martial Art is is one of the most mental sport because it's fighting sport eh? and to increase the speed of the martial arts not only you have to increase the speed of the limb speed but you have to be uh, concerned about the whole body speed too and if you want to increase the speed of the martial arts uh, uh, player or we can say boxer red fling something like that eh? uh, First thing is very important for the martial arts is uh, movement pattern. Movement pattern. Yeah, movement pattern. Are they correct or movement pattern? It's very important to correct the movement pattern of martial art. And then, after that, if you want to increase the speed, it's not train speed, but you have to, first thing you have to increase in the movement pattern, you have to increase the coordination. Do a lot of coordination in the movement pattern. Put, you add more power. You train power, you do strength training, core muscle, and then you put the power into the movement pattern. Because in the martial art the competition is variety of the movement pattern. You, and it depends on your athletes can select the movement pattern uh, in fighting. Also, you need to increase not only speed, non, you have to increase the rhythmic, the rhythmic of the movement, especially the, how fast your athlete can move the leg. This is the rhythmic of the, the movement, not only speed, speed, rhythmic, and agility. And then, you have to think about the energy supply. How much you need the energy supply during the competition? Yeah. In the speed and uh, energy supply is from ATP CP or from anaerobic lactic energy system supply or all, all together in the same time. Okay, the key point is increase the movement pattern, coordination, add more power, train acceleration, and speed of the rhythmic of the food. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Eka. And uh, not the question. It's about the relation between speed and strength. Of course, you explained already. You explained yeah. already how to uh, do the speed with the strength or strength with speed. But uh, he asked about the how the relation. You want to develop strength first than speed or whatever. How you manage is maybe have to answer. Okay. <laughs> normally, normally uh, when we do training, yeah, when we do training program, this is must but talk about the training program. You have to be balanced between power training and speed training. In in the training phase, what you have to increase first? You have to speed increase the speed first or you have to increase the strength first. Normally if I do this, I increase the speed first. And on the same in the same time I also do some power training, a power training. So how I do uh, a speed training? I not do sprinting. I do more in coordination. Mm -hmm. I do more in coordination to reset the brain to move faster. Uh, train the neural muscular to move to get us to work to get us better. So we do a coordination. Yeah. Then and and then you do a coordination. It means you changing the running mechanic of your athlete. When your athlete getting better in running mechanic, now you can add more and more power. Don't put big engine in a small car. And what I mean, if your athlete is not uh, strong enough, and your athlete is not good movement, and then you put power, 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 and then your athlete run with the wrong mechanism with the wrong uh, movement mechanic and then what happened bang injury so let let work with the coordination 
technical movement good and then you add uh, power training into the good movement position good movement good movement mechanism and take good good technique of the sprinting and then after that you have to think about the energy supply mm. understand so yeah. first thing you have to increase acceleration it means you have to work with anaerobic electric energy system okay and then you have to work with the aerobic don't start with the anaerobic lactic so you work from atp cp and then you work aerobic yeah we work aerobic and then atp cp very good it means your athletes can accelerate very fast mm -hmm. and then you have aerobic to be uh, recovery and get be better aerobic you can get more workload and then you get into anaerobic lactic energy system and then you do speed endurance training so it's been first first time first thing when you do uh, training sprinting your athletes can perform 60 meters 80 meters 60 meters 70 meters and then also uh, same pace that is a good chance to do a speed endurance training and anaerobic lactic contribution into your energy system supply energy supply and then your athlete can start fast and finish fast okay okay Ika. but uh, before i go to sorry Agung, i have another new chatting question here so i have to read for you and i have the you still have to answer it says here how to differentiate between speed training in speed endurance and how to maintain the speed uh, during uh, near the competition maybe you have a little bit uh, to elaborate on this question <laughs> <laughs> normally I, I already mentioned a speed training yeah. and and speed endurance training is different it is different by the physiological mm -hmm. if you do speed training Pure speed training is mean you do a flying start. Uh, it mean you still you do training with the maximum speed. You want to increase the maximum speed. It means you can train flying start and you can train more acceleration. Better acceleration, the better maximum speed. And then you at least get into the maximum speed. Now we talk about speed endurance. Speed endurance is energy supply from anaerobic electric energy system and air anaerobic electric energy system two two energy system in the same time but if you want to train acceleration and uh, maximum speed you still work in anaerobic electric energy system this is more con more anaerobic electric energy system contribution but if you work in uh, Speed endurance is mean you work in anaerobic electric energy system more contribution, but all the energy system are work together in the same time. Okay, this is the difference okay. between yeah. um, speed and speed, speed endurance yeah. training. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And actually, also you say about speed strength, but speed strength is power. So we can you talk already with Vera about the how to do the weight or resistance on everything so there is a okay speed strength. a little bit speed yeah. strength a speed yeah. strength a speed strength you train at uh, muscle contraction how fast your muscle can do con concentric contraction how fast your muscle your athletes muscle can do eccentric and concentric contraction linking together step trotting cycle okay yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think you have a great answer. Thank you, Vira and Meka. And now we go to Mansuri Agung. I think you have also some question here. Yeah. On your experience, uh, what is the relation between your BMI, body mass index, and your speed? You <laughs> have to answer. When you're in the peak performance, what is your body mass index? If you measure, if you measure, but if you're not measure, what do you feel about that? Then the second one is the program after Ramadan. I think you can elaborate. And also the last one, I think uh, the percentage of the load that uh, you can allow for the people. There is the last question. Okay, so you have uh, three questions and you can check in the chat. I think we have three questions for you. Mas Soriya, silakan. 
ya sebenarnya banyak juga kan aja cuma tiga yang pertanyaan tadi <laughs> private juga ini <laughs> oke okay, siap oke okay. ah ketika saya oke okay, ini pengalaman sering kalah dalam BMI jadi uh, dengan dengan posisi saya dengan tinggi 170 cm uh, ya 170 cm itu ketika saya memecahkan rekor itu berat badan saya 65 setengah 66 di badan itu itu teman-teman yang yang membuat saya enak sekali nyaman sekali ketika ya semua jadi melakukan aktivitas ketika turun ada sempat saatnya turun itu rasanya yang melayang bagaimana nggak nyaman sebenarnya seperti itu jadi uh, average nya itu pak kalau kalau dari dari apa fakta saya yang saya rasakan 170 cm tinggi saya dengan berat badan 66 selisih 5 cm ya 5 cm, 5, 5 poin lah antara tinggi poin. badan dengan berat badan oke okay. kemudian yang kedua yang mana nih Pak? <laughs> yang kedua tentang program after Ramadan oke okay, program program setelah Ramadan sebenarnya gini, uh, program kita kita lihat dulu uh, apakah sebelum Ramadan ini sudah melak- melak- melakukan program latihan dulu contohnya biasanya kan dulu ketika uh, atlet dikasih program latihan karena dalam Ramadan pulang ke rumah contohnya. Nah, itu di sinilah sebenarnya tip e, pelatih-pelatih mesti pinter untuk ngecek, untuk kontrol cara mudah bagaimana sih si anak ini atau atlet ini berbelum melaksanakan program latihan apa enggak dengan cara ya nanti ketika sudah selesai latihan ada tes parameter yang sederhana aja gitu ya. Yang sebenarnya bukan enggak komplit semuanya dites. Di situ akan kelihatan bahwa anak ini si atlet ini melakukan program latihan apa enggak seperti itu. Nah, selain itu juga tes parameter sederhana juga bisa melihat profiling atlet nih. Nah, profiling atletnya ini contohnya Surya nih, Surya ini profilnya bagaimana? Speednya berapa persen dari benchmark? Kemudian daya tahannya berapa persen segala macamnya. Nah, kalau memang target atau sasarannya benchmark, nah itu uh, berat dan kapan itu yang harus disusun ulang di situ, harus di, di, dipecah lagi waktunya. Berat dari dari berapa persen? Kalau memang kondisi Surya Agung ini sudah 60% atau eh sudah 80% atau baru 70% atau malah baru 60% ya itu itu dari start start awalnya untuk memulai program selanjutnya. Hmm. Bahkan enggak ya menurut saya pribadi opini saya enggak harus di Ramadan aja. Apapun itu ya profilingnya masing-masing atlet kita harus tahu ketika mulai itu yang harus dilakukan jangan sampai wasting time. Ketika atlet kemampuannya sudah 60% dikasih program latihan yang 60% yang nggak ngaruh apa-apa, buang waktu, buang tenaga, belum lagi kebalikan posisi atletnya 60% dikasih program latihan ya 80% wah ngos-ngosan yang ada malah masih dua dan sebagainya nggak nggak sampai targetnya seperti itu pak. Oke, okay. thank you Mas Suryo. And maybe yeah. you can uh, answer your feeling about the fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fiber in your muscle because there's question about the relation when you feel, can you feel or you you have to measure. When you have fast twitch the muscle fiber and so so this how you handle it. Ya. Kalau saya pribadi sih kan pokok saya ini pokoknya ini langsung super power itu aja. Oke, jadi kalau yang saya rasakan adalah saya bisa yang bisa merasakan ya ketika dari kecil sebenarnya sudah ketika kita saya sendiri main main ketika sekolahan istirahat sekolahan itu berlari-lari yang kemudian dikerjar temennya bisa change of direction itu kan merasakan tuh saya punya sesuatu nih seperti itu kemudian ada saya bisa melompatkan dulu kalau kalau zaman saya kecil kan gadget belum ada bisa uh, lompat tali gitu pak lompat tali yang benar-benar eksplosif seperti itu dan dan ya saya bisa merasakan oh berarti dan begitu mendengar uh, ilmu tambahan ilmu oh, otot putih otot merah uh, otot cepat gitu kan kayak gitu kan Oh berarti saya tuh otot putih nih terus kemudian ya saya menekunin awalnya sepak bola kemudian masuk ke atletik yang benar-benar disusun secara sistematik ya ya alhamdulillah saya bisa mencapai hasil yang maksimal yang luar biasa meskipun saya kenal atlet itu baru umur 17 tahun itu. Mm-hmm. Oke okay. thank you very much Mas Suryo Agung yeah, thank you Wira thank you Eka and Suryo Agung thank you uh, and I, I want I want to open one session maybe for uh, the voice uh, question if you want, but we have already twelve uh, fifteen. What do you think? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Question. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, we we have that question here. We can. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Again. Again. Okay.
Nobody? Okay, so I think the question is already in the chat room already and answered well. Thank you very much for Vira, Eka, and Suryo Agung. I think the, this is very, very beneficial for us, very, very useful for us, this uh, webinar. And at least we have no idea how to train speed. And next uh, series will be endurance training. We will invite one coach from India and one coach, basketball coach from Indonesia. He will talk about the uh, speed uh, endurance in uh, team sport. And we will have one perspective from Malaysian athlete. Jeremy is, I think, is here also. Uh, Jeremy, are you ready to do in the 6th of June? Jeremy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, okay, you're ready, yeah, for the, the next uh, section. So I think uh, it's very happy to have you here also, and I think you know uh, the structure of this uh, webinar. So thank you again very much for all the participants who join and give contribution to all this uh, quality webinars. And I hope you learn a lot from our speaker, and also you can implement it, the knowledge and experience here to your daily working as a coach. And thank you also for the senior coach here who come here, Mr. Tang Aikin, Hamza, Hamka, and Hosni, and Roslin, and what's name, the one from Sarawak, I forget. <laughs> and also some okay. other students from other schools. Yeah. I think we are very happy to have you here. And the okay. guest from the top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Great to see you. Yeah. See you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. I'm, I'm really, really, uh, yeah, hi. <laughs> I am very uh, grateful to see you. First of all, uh, thank you to give me this password from uh, Mr. Subramaniam. He gave me a password for, to me. So I hope uh, next time also I get the password from that, uh, from you. Um, I, I, this session is very, very useful for me because I am also a student coach in Nepal. So, I'm doing my my world, my person here. So this knowledge, this uh, June classes knowledge will be uh, used in my training session. Thank okay. you for all. Thank you very much, uh, Rakesh. And please give me also the password, and I will go to the money for us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but this, this time we have a lockdown, so we have not. Give them any permission to go okay, any, anywhere. Sure, sure, sure. But they are going. You will not go. You will not go. They are not going because the knee. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, and thank you for joining and to concentrate in this uh, webinar. I hope to see you again in the next series of the webinar. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Have a good day, all. Have a good day, too. Terima kasih, Pak Devi. Terima kasih. Amir Amani, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, also, thank you very much. Yeah, sure, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. Be well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Arya, thank you also. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mas Ivan Muhajirin, terima kasih sudah datang. Yes. Sama Pak Margono. Selamat <laughs> pagi. <laughs> Pak Margono senior, izin, Pak Adit. Terima kasih. Terima kasih.